My name is Rich Harrington. I'm the publisher of PhotoFocus, and I want to show you some of the powerful tools inside of Lightroom and Adobe Camera Raw, particularly related to the latest update. Before we start to use the mask tool, I want to revisit something that a lot of folks miss, and that's here under the edit tool. And if you take a look at the geometry here, you'll see there's some very powerful options for upright. This can analyze parts of the image and try to fix it. However, one of my favorites is this one here called Guided that most people don't know how to use. What you want to do is effectively identify an object and you're looking to specify four planes of information. So just look for the different surfaces, for example, the top and sides of the building. And you notice here by precisely aligning those, we can do a whole lot to really fix the perspective of the building, which is quite amazing. Additionally, if you need to, you can still level the image by using the rotate option here. Notice how simple it is to just dial that in. But in this case, that's really quite perfect. Now that we've got that, I want to explore the new masking tools. These are found in different places depending upon the version, but they bring a wealth of options. Notice here that we can choose different types of content. Let's start with Select Sky. With just a click, it's going to analyze and attempt to identify the sky. Now, that did pretty well. It did get a few other areas here with the roof, but all in all, I'm happy with that. However, instead of doing a global adjustment, I'd like to make it a bit more gradiated. So what I'm going to do is choose to subtract here and use the linear gradient. This allows me to subtract from the sky. For example, I can click here and start to create a gentle transition from top to bottom. And you'll see that the two gradients combine, the linear, which is subtracting, and the regular sky gradient. Now let's rename that, and we'll call this sky. That works quite nicely. I'll hide the overlay here and just darken that down a little bit to bring out the sky by pulling down the exposure, cool the temperature a little bit, and really take a look at some of the color controls. I think this is looking quite nice. I'll just bring out the saturation slightly and shift the hue ever so gently to bring out the blue just a bit more. You'll notice that this retains its live nature. So if you want, you can actually continue to adjust here and still refine the mask while it's a live effect. All right, that was quite nice to get the sky, but how about more of the image? Well, let's create a new mask. In this case, I want to take advantage of color range. This is going to allow me to make a new mask here based on color. If I take the key here and hold down the shift key, I can start to click to make a general selection on the vegetation. That worked out nicely. Then what I'm going to do is subtract from that by using luminosity. This way we can constrain this to both color and brightness level. So we're going to tell it to subtract. And by identifying this here, notice how we can really dial that in a little bit so it's not affecting as much of an area. So in this case here, you see you're telling it what to remove, creating a gentle blend, and then really shifting that along the gradient there so that we have a nice selection without necessarily getting the entire image. That worked nicely here. What I was trying to do was choose part of the image not all of the image. And I'm very satisfied with that, just to create a gentle blend there and get mostly the trees. Now we'll uncheck that. And what we can do is begin to recover the trees nicely, as well as shift their tint or temperature. Notice how this really lets us refine the greens in a very natural way. Temperature and tint is actually the best way to do this rather than hue, because it's more transformative and gentle. I like that. And while we're at it, let's bring out the texture there ever so nicely and just look at how the shadows of the tree come to life. That works quite nicely. We'll rename this and let's call this vegetation. Now what I want to do is choose more of the foreground here from this front area. It's very flat with no shadows and quite boring. So I'm going to create a new mask here and tell it to make a luminance range mask. Now we'll click to define the basic area and you see that it did a nice job of basically targeting that. If I hold down the option key, 
it is going to start to modify that a little bit. Or we can choose subtract here and again use the luminance range to choose an area we don't want. Now this is quite nice and again just play with these sliders until you start to get the ballpark in there. I like how this has selected the foreground but I don't want so much of the sky up here. So we're going to continue to subtract and notice how simple it is to just use either a brush or a gradient. In this case I'm just going to brush that area out so I can tell it to subtract there with the brush. You see brush minus. You can get a nice big brush and just take that away. Notice how easy this is for the live effect. The red areas of the rubylith mask indicate what is being selected. So it's very easy to refine this to taste. The brush here gives you full control. So if you want less feather, you can refine that and just really subtract away the parts that you aren't interested in. All right, I like that the foreground is selected, but I don't want it to be even. So let's refine this a little bit more. We're going to subtract again, this time using a linear gradient. And as we start to drag, you'll see it becomes interactive. Notice there how that creates a nice fall off from the foreground to the object. And if I reposition this here, it continues to be a live effect. So we could see that transition from selected to deselected. This is great because now we can really darken that down to create some interesting shadows in the foreground, really recover the detail so that blown out brick comes together and boost the contrast as well as things like texture and clarity. Notice just how that transforms. If you want to see the before and after, just click the eyeball and that's really a nice adjustment there, especially because it has a gradual fall off. Now I like that. But as I look at this here, I see a few challenges. The transition with the tree is a little bit of a halo. So at any point, you can come in and select these. So if I want that to be more tolerant, I can just expand that slider, as well as pull this transition here, and you see how the feather gets refined. So that's quite useful if you get any halos, to note that everything is still a live effect, and you can transform this to really finesse where that blend occurs. That looks so much more better. All right, I love how this is transformed. Let's just shape it one more time. I'm gonna add a new mask, and in this case, I want to create a feeling of adjustment coming from the angle. I see that the light is coming from sort of back here, and so I wanna emphasize that. So I'm just gonna create a general linear gradient and drag across here to select this, which is great. But additionally, I want to subtract. So notice here, we can combine. Here's that linear gradient. I'm gonna choose subtract here, and we can see any of these other areas, which is pretty cool. Or you can see add here if you want to add to it. This really gives you that flexibility. All right, I think that works nicely. Let's go ahead here and tell this that we want to intersect. So I'm gonna intersect this here with a gradient. There we go. And you see how it creates the transition there with the new linear gradient, which is pretty cool. Let's undo for a moment, come back right up here to the top. And in this case, we'll just modify with the subtract command and do the color range. I'll click on the vegetation. And I like how that sort of falls off on the tree. There we go. Let's click again and it selects a little bit more and that just really works nicely. We can refine that and now we've got a great gentle gradient across the sky. Stop showing the overlay and just gently adjust that and notice how it really emphasizes that sense of direction. We can either add or subtract the light and really balance out the shadow versus highlight there to emphasize the directional of the light itself. All right, let's click there to see the before and after. And as you see, those masks are incredibly powerful to emphasize the shadows and really push things through. Plus the upright adjustment really saved the day on this architectural image.